I think that's something that the internet has just changed. It sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. It sounds like an IT issue. It's a mess. So today I took my health assessment exam two and I had pathology, pharmacology, pathophysiology, pharmacology class and it was my group's turn to present about a topic and this week's was diabetes and metformin and all the groups have been doing PowerPoint presentations and there was a lot of words on every single PowerPoint slide when people were doing them. Our group's turn, I knew I didn't like seeing all those words and couldn't read them. I go to Google Images and find pictures that help explain diabetes and how metformin works. I recommend you guys do this if you're in nursing school and you need to understand something. Type it in Google as simple as you can and then click images. And every image is definitely not going to be a winner, but you can find pictures and diagrams and PowerPoint slides that just help break things down so you're not overwhelmed with tons of words. And I just found two different images, one about normal insulin glucose response, type 1 diabetes, and then type 2 diabetes that showed, you know, the differences. And then I found one picture of the body and how metformin works on a cellular level and literally just broke that picture down then into the top was talking about how it affects circulation. The middle picture was talking about how it affects the liver and then the bottom part was talking about how it affects our gut. But pictures are great for learning and they're great for PowerPoints. And no, it's not plagiarism because our very last slide was a resources slide and I APA style documented what slides I used. You know, I'm not plagiarizing. I gave credit where credit's due. So if you have to do a presentation and you can include pictures Type in what you're wanting to learn, what you're wanting to explain, what you're wanting to understand, and click on images. You will be amazed how many helpful things you get. And if you're a visual learner, those make great study guides, just pictures for everything you need to understand. I think that's why I like YouTube too. And and my favorite YouTubers have a lot of pictures and diagrams, like simplenursing.com. I think that's with Nurse Mike. He has a lot of cartoon pictures as he talks. That helps me focus. Anyways, pictures for the win. People really, people complimented our PowerPoint slide a lot. And the teacher really liked it. And honestly, it was me and my pictures. But that went well. It's an easy project. Like, our group was stressing about it. I'm just like, guys, this is hardly any of your grade. And it's easy. School is stuff is, is keeping me pretty busy right now. A 12-hour clinical last Monday, a 12-hour clinical this Saturday, not 12 hours. I think it's eight hours this Saturday, but then I work before that one. And then another 12-hour clinical next Monday on top of getting three tests done recently, exams, which you have to get at least a 78 on those, although it's not not that bad, but it takes time. Like today's exam I had for health assessment, I don't know what I got on it. I, I'm pretty sure I got an A on it. I'd be really surprised if I got anything lower than a B plus. So it's like, you know, I'm not stressing about the grade, but even so, before taking that exam, they tell you all these things like review this before you take the exam and you want to review it because you want to know you want to do good on the exam and they give you a great review sheet. They give us actually cahoots games. If you don't know what that is, it's teachers. I didn't know what it was before um, Elmhurst. Teachers can make up multiple choice questions and it's like a game. You have to answer as fast as you can. <laughs> And you can see how your other classmates did on them. They give us cahoots and they're not the test questions, but it covers some of the same material. And if you know all those cahoots questions well, you're going to end up knowing the answers to most of your test questions, even though they're not the same questions. They just cover the same information. You know, I had like probably on average, seems like 30 questions per Kahoot test. It seems like at least. And there was six Kahoots games to play for each of the different six session, sections on health assessments. So if there was 30 questions in each Kahoots game and six Kahoots games, that's 180 multiple choice questions that I was practicing before I took the health assessment test. And I practiced them twice. So I went through 180 questions twice before taking the test. And 
When you go through the questions, if I didn't know what a term was, I would stop and Google it and look it up. Even if that wasn't the answer to the question, like, oh, let me try to think of one. One of them showed a picture of a person with a spinal deformity, and it said, Does this person have kyphosis, scoliosis, or lordosis? Sorry if I said any of those wrong. Well, I knew he had kyphosis, so I clicked kyphosis. That was right. But then I'm like, what's lordosis? So I googled lordosis because I saw, mm, that's something. So even though it wasn't the answer, I knew, ooh, that's a term I need to know. So it took me a while to, to study for the health assessment exam, but they give us such great study stuff. Once I finished that studying, I don't know how long I spent studying for it. Maybe, I don't know, maybe two to three hours. Looked over some notes and looked over all those cahoots. And then after I finished that, I took the test. And anyways, every exam's like that pretty much. Every exam, we know a whole bunch of things to study and look over. And a lot of times they really help put it in easy formats for us to study and look over. But it does take time to do that before you take the test. I don't know where all this fits into this with getting ready for exams, but one really surprising thing maybe or maybe it surprises people, is I don't have notebooks for my classes. And at first I was trying to take notes on uh, Google Docs during Zoom classes. I was trying to take some notes, but I quickly learned it wasn't a very effective use of my time to try to take notes during class unless they're going over, hey, here's some things you need to know for the exam. And then I scribble furiously. But it's not pages and pages of notes. I'm going to show you the only paper really I've used mostly for classes. I have this blue three ring binder right here that you can put, put loose leaf paper in. And I literally print out the syllabus. Hold on. I literally print out, here's the name of the class, module one. Here's what's due for module one. And I like stickers, so it looks like I put stickers on those when I got them done. Here's the name of the class, health assessment. This was module seven. These are all links on, this is printed off of the Elmhurst website. So these are all like, well, those aren't clickable links. Those are saying what to read in the book, which I don't read the book. But I would click that and I would click that and read all that material in there. And then here's the stuff that's due. And I just mark it off as I do it. Oh, I didn't mark that off. I got that done. I got that done. I got that done. I knew I, those were the last three things. And yeah, here's the exams. I took that one. I just took that one today. I got that one coming up and that one. So two more exams coming up. Four exams in 11 days is a lot, guys. So, but this is this is how I keep track of what's due. And each one of these pages represents a class and the assignments for that week. Love my nail polish. It's a mess, huh? So that's it. Like this is, you know, this is the adult health one class. This was the second week of the class and what I had to do. Now, I was in Path Farm last week and she's like, here's some things that are going to be on the, on the exam. Man, I started scribbling notes furiously. Do not pause it and look at my bad spelling. It is horrible. Today we had Path Farm again, again before the exam. And she's like, here's some stuff that's going to be on the quiz. I just started like writing down furiously that stuff. But those scribbles just literally on my pages in here, that's it. That's the only notes I'm keeping. And I will go back and look at those. Now, for the Path Farm exams, we are allowed to use med sheets we make, or there's a link to the electronic book that sometimes works and sometimes doesn't work. Uh, I know that sounds like a mess. Or if you have a hard copy of the book, you can bring the book. So for that class, the first exam, we didn't have med sheets we could bring, but we could use the link, but the link didn't work for several people. So this time she's like, okay, you can use med sheets and you better have them in case the link doesn't work. It's a mess. Yeah, I know you guys, that sounds bad. We could go on that, that issue. That was kind of a snafu with that last exam. The link did work for me, but I'm not counting on it working this time because I'm just hearing, it sounds like an IT issue and I'm glad they're doing it the way they're doing it. I wish it was fair and everyone had access to the link, but I'm prepared to take it and the link not work and not be said about it um, because we can take notes and she's gone thoroughly over everything we need to know. So I will look at the notes I scribbled down on there 
and I will use those nodes for Path Farm to help me make my med sheets that I get to use on the exam. And I will make sure, like she said, let's see, one of the things I have is common side effects of statins. Well, I'll definitely make sure that's listed on my med sheets. I have written down patients should continue discontinue Coumadin for surgery, but then they bridge to another medication. You know, I'll definitely have that on my med sheets because she told us we need to know that. She said, asthma contraindicated for beta blockers. What four letters do most beta blockers send in? Oh, well, oh, well. You know, if someone's on a heparin drip, you want to check their APTT lab. I will make sure all these things she told us to know for the exam that I find a way to fit those onto the med sheets. I will have notes for my exam I take in a couple days for Path Farm. I will make them up specifically for that test. And I don't think she gives us, she does not give us those cahoots study questions. She just does that stuff. And you know, I'll probably spend a couple hours or maybe even three hours making up my study guide for that exam. And then I'm pretty sure I'll do great on the exam. But yeah, it takes about, you know, it takes that time to make the study sheet. It's time. It's not hard, but it's time consuming. But yeah, I don't take detailed notes. I am going to write notes for Path Farm. It's more like it's notes for the exam. It's not like I'm taking notes during class. It's literally just notes that I want to know to take for the exam for open notes. It's not notes to study. I don't study notes and I don't take notes during lectures. I think that's something that the internet has just changed how we need to do things. I can't imagine when I was in high school not taking notes during history class. I can't imagine that. And I can't imagine when I was in high school not studying my history notes before history exam. I had to study my notes and there was another student that took like really, really good notes and I'd study hall with her and I would always be like, hey, before the exam, let's go over notes together. And she would just now, her way of studying was to reread her notes all out loud. And my way of studying was to just like listen to her say them and look at her notes. You had to do that. You had to do that when I was in high school. I think now, I think I could be in that. If I had that same exact teacher and those same exact exams, I think I could go in there, not take a single note during class and just listen to the teacher lecture and absorb it. And then I think to study, I could just Go watch some YouTube videos that were edutainment on the topics covered in class. And I think I'd be ready for the test. I just, if you are an auditory visual learner, there's no reason to take notes anymore. The notes have already been taken and organized and put into cartoon format, entertainment, edutainment format on YouTube. Just look it up. And watch it again. Now, if writing stuff helps you remember it, then by all means, take notes. But I think we we live in an age where taking notes during a lecture is just, for most of us, it's not necessary. For most lectures, it's not necessary. And I do not take notes during any of my classes, like I said, unless they're saying, okay, here's some stuff that is for sure going to be on the exam or that you should definitely know before the exam. And then I'm like, okay, let me write this down. That's it. We have so much information. And when 20 years ago, you went to school, honestly, to get access to the information. I mean, really, you went to school to get access to the information. You could buy a college textbook, I guess, and not hear a lecture, but it helps to hear, hear the expert talk about it and to have, you know, good, valid resources like a college textbook. The way you did that 20 years ago was you went to college and you listened to a professor and you read the college textbook. But now we have amazing, really intelligent people giving lectures for free on YouTube and they might be better lectures than your professor. And instead of a textbook teaching you stuff, we have really creative people that have put the things you need to know, the complicated things you need to know to really catchy musical tunes. I mean, just cranial nerve songs, guys. Oh, 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 to touch and feel. Very good, Velvet. Such heaven. Such heaven. I've, I've listened to that video so many times. And then we'll put a link below. There's two. The other one, it's a parody song, cranial nerve parody song. It's just great. 
It's great. And it's complicated, hard to remember stuff that, you know, 20, 30 years ago, the only way you were learning that stuff was from sitting in a lecture class and looking at textbooks. And it was boring. And now if you need to learn about the cranial nerves, just listen to these entertaining songs and they'll teach you. I love it. I think it's great. I think, man, young people today... <laughs> But can you put an old voice on me? Put an old snapkin filter on me for this one. Young people today do not have a clue what school was like for us when we were in college. It is just, it's just a totally different thing. And maybe that's why Elmhurst seems easy to me. Maybe I remember how college was 20 years ago. And now there's just resources we did not have. Back when I was a young and back when I was in my 20s. But it's just, it's... I feel very privileged to have access to so much information organized so well. Like I said, I need to do a presentation on metformin. I just typed in what I wanted to know. I clicked images and there it was. Just beautiful images that I could put in the PowerPoint that helped me understand it that I could use to explain it to the class. It's just beautiful. Okay, I think I've rambled enough about the wonders of the internet and how much I love Google Images and how much I love YouTube parody educational songs. I think I should make a list of so far my favorite top 10 educational nursing videos. I think I should do that because this made me realize I should do that. So next video I make is going to be my so far 10 favorite educational songs I have used to get me through nursing school. I'll leave it there. If you have a song idea, educational nursing song idea, put it in the comments below for people. All right, guys, that's enough of that. See you later.